Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 2 Expert Mode Season 2. I did a little bit of work on a blaze spawner in between episodes on live stream on twitch.tv slash vikibreaker so go follow me there. We just recently hit a thousand followers there which is really really great because we're gonna hit 10,000 on YouTube so it's kind of like two anniversary events or something something. But anyway, let's go check it out. The way I designed this spawner to work is that we control everything with this simple lever here and when we flick it, the spawner turns on, the lamps that we have in here turn off so they allow the spawner to work and then we also turn on the fans that we have underneath here. So this uh, three are gonna push them all the way over to the edge and then this middle one pushes them all the way over to this edge. So you can see that if I click show area, it goes all the way to the marble uh, and then if we show area on this guy, it just goes in a straight line all the way over to there. And because I have uh, enough height upgrades uh, in here, that means that it covers just the bottom lock of the spawner and the blazes drop down anyway, so that is perfectly fine. Then we have these two that just push them towards the center, towards this middle block, so they get caught in this one and pushed into that 3x3 three three area over there, which has another fan that is pushing the whole 3x3 three three area all the way up to here. And then I have this fan pushing them all the way over to these vector plates, which then transport them over there, and then they drop down and fall down right over there in between all of those trapdoors. Uh, and that is very kind of simple and done in a very modern way, but basically it's the same thing you would do with a regular skeleton spawner in vanilla, but you would have to use a water elevator pretty much. And this way, it's very much more cool. So if I turn on the lever here, you should see blazes are going to start spawning. They're going to get transported upwards. And then eventually they will land over here on a wooden spike over there. So they will take damage up to half a heart. And if we turn this off, we can just simply left click and pretty much kill almost all of them in one hit, which is really, really amazing. Uh, the other thing that I kind of want to add here is a sound muffler, and uh, I think we can do add recent, uh, and I have to, um, hold on, we'll do this. We will turn you on, we'll come under here, we're going to wait for them to start making noise, and then we'll add recent, blaze ambient, blaze ambient, add, Blaze burn, add. Oh, right, and we have to blacklist. There we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we can do recent, blaze death. Also blaze hurt. Uh, blacklist, recent. Um, blaze burn. And I think that should be it, I think. We don't have any more noise. Yeah, lovely. Okay, sweet. That, won't, that works wonders. Lovely, we can turn it off. Uh, we'll wait for the rest of them to clear out. And the way I have the redstone control down here is this basic redstone interface is controlling the spawner. So when we flick the lever, this guy turns on. This one is the inverted one, which turns off the lamps. So the lamps are on by default because of this redstone not filter, and they are off when we flick the lever. And then this redstone repeater, the advanced one, turns off 200 ticks later than everything else, and this is controlling the fans. Uh, and the reason for that is because the, if the spawner spawns mobs right as we flick the lever and the fans would turn off, then we would have blazes in here. Although in fairness, they would despawn in one minute, I just don't want it that way. So we just leave the, uh, the fans on for another 10 seconds so all the blaze get filtered through and we are left with no mobs in there. So that is just how that works. And that is pretty much it. And we can fill our Petty Tartaric Gem super easily. And now we can continue on with some more blood magic.
So to answer the question why I made all of those reagents is because I wanted to make two sigils of elemental affinity or actually one sigil of elemental affinity and one elemental affinity reagent because that is required in the crafting recipe for the iridescent altar. And I then wanted to make one of each of the uh, sigils as well. So the air, the lava, the water and uh, also the elemental affinity because you can put them in a sigil of holding. If you press H, you can put five different sigils in here. So we're gonna put the water and the lava in here. We'll put the divination in the middle because we're that's kind of the one that we're gonna be using the most. We won't really be using any of these because this one protects you from lava damage, water uh, drowning, and also I believe it prevents fall damage. And it requires blood to be always in your network. So you can we can see that by clicking this. We have 2,350. If I turn this on, we should be draining. There we go. You can see it going down. Uh, so that is uh, kind of neat if you don't have uh, insane Supremio armor to prevent all of your damages pretty much. So this one is going to go into the system. Uh, it's going to go along with the air sigil because this is basically flight. Also to, co to the cost of blood. So uh, I believe we had over 2,000. We have 1,800 now. So each time you do it, it's 50 LP. So that will go in here as well. Uh, so these things we need to save for the recipe. And the next order of business here to do is the draft of Angelus, which I believe is going to require a tier four altar. Uh, this requires a magician's blood orb, archmages, magicians, master, archmages, magician. Magician is tier three. Okay, okay, so that's fine. So we just need Thaumium, which I don't think I have enough of. And I still have an, oh, we have a, we have a block. How oh, wonderful. Okay, so how much blood was it required? Uh, if we check here, it is 25,000. Okay, so we need runes of capacity. So if we fill up our entire blood altar, uh, I believe we can store 10,000 LP. And I don't think I can provide it fast enough for the Thaumium block to be trans... Uh, tr uh, transposed into uh, the orb that we need. So we are going to need runes of capacity. Uh, and I don't know how much each of one of these uh, increases, but we can do something like this for the moment and put four on here because we're going to we're going to use them in a recipe anyway. But that made us how much? Uh, so we have 18,000 now. What if we make a few more of these? I just need to make some more blank runes. So let's make, uh, we need to grab our orb. One, two, three, and four more. Can I, can, is that possible? Okay, and do I have any more imbued? No, I need to make a few more imbued slates. And there we go, we can make one, two, and three, like so. And close that. We're just gonna vein mine these away, and then we're gonna do like this. And now we should have, hopefully, enough essence. Yeah, 26,000. Okay, so all I need to do is fill up the altar, then we can toss the Thaumian block in there and turn it into the orb. The next thing that we need is to get weak blood shards, and we can get that by getting a binding reagent, which requires 400 will, and uh, should be made real quick here, like so. And then we need to take this and put it in the alchemy array with a uh, sword of uh, the diamond variety. So diamond sword, like so. And we put down an arcane ash and then the binding reagent and it makes a really cool thing and it's gonna spawn some lighting and be really amazing and gonna make us a bound blade. And there we go. And the bound blade, you shift right click to activate and shift right click to deactivate. Uh, and then we can uh, spawn some blazes here and kill them. And we got ourselves some blood shards. So you can just smack them like so. Uh, and we have to make sure to keep them deactivated. I think it drains when it's activated. Uh, and it drains a LP from our essence, uh, from our current storage. So if we run out, we're going to get bad potion effects. Uh, but now that we have the weak blood shards, we can use those to make the next tier of Tartaric Gem if we wanted to, but that requires a tier 4 altar because it requires a demonic slate. But we can use it in here to make the Draft of Angelus, which also, it says, no, it's also a Magician's Orb. Okay, that's fine. It drains 20,000 LP though, and it requires tier 3. Cool.
Wow. So the next thing in the recipe is a celestial crystal. And apparently there is a root skeleton who wants to interrupt me. Go away. Thank you. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to take a bucket of starlight. I will put it on star metal ore because uh, I've read that it uh, allows it to turn faster. We're gonna toss. Hold on. Yes, <laughs> there we go. So we're gonna toss that and stardust, I believe, in here. And then it should turn into a rock crystal cluster, I believe. And what we can do is we can place uh, one of these close by. So what I'll do is we will place it uh, possibly like up here, right? And then we are gonna bind this to the star metal and also to the cluster once it forms. So for that, I need my linking tool, which is right here. Uh, there we go. We have a celestial crystal cluster and we can right click this and that. Uh, okay, we'll link to that and link to that as well. So if we also do this, I believe this should grow a bit faster, but I just need to wait for this to reach uh, metadata four. Uh, we should see stage zero on the right here. Uh, and when it reaches stage four, we should be able to harvest this uh, to get ourselves a celestial crystal. I so wanted to break the crystal on camera and I alt tabbed to delete a recording clip and I tapped back in and I left clicked and it broke the crystal. So we have two celestial crystals now and we have 548, 65, 65 and 758, 71, 52. Okay, uh, I do have, I believe, another bucket of uh, starlight here. So what we can do is place that guy down again and we're gonna just place a fence here, right? I don't know if that is going to obstruct the the celestial crystal things, but uh, we can toss in another rock crystal. Whoops. Uh, and I will also just turn off my magnet for the moment. Uh, we'll t toss this in and that in. I removed the dislocator thingy because it really doesn't need to be a thing. Uh, but we'll just wait for that to make another crystal. I set up our spectra relays again, and I totally forgot before that I need to put a glass lens inside of it for it to work. Uh, and now we pretty much have a, a bunch of starlight here. Uh, during the nighttime, we pretty much have a full system. So uh, what we can do is time in a bottle this to make it nighttime and we should have quite a bit here. And we can now craft ourselves the iridescent altar as soon as we get a tiny bit more starlight. We'll see if it hits, there it goes. And we can resonating wand this and it's going to make cool particle effects and turn this guy into an iridescent altar. Unless we're losing starlight. Oh, there we go. Okay. More particles even. <laughs> there it is. Sweet. Uh, in the meantime, we'll toss another aquamarine in here. Ah! You learned more about radiance. Your vision expands. We'll grab this. So we get the quest. And then we need a totally different setup for this. So the spectral relays that I just set up they have to go. So pretty much, uh, we're gonna tear everything down. I'm gonna turn on my magnet again, because this made a crystal. Lovely. So we basically just need to remove everything that we have here, because we need to remake it and replace it in a different kind of way. So let me just get rid of all of this, and then we'll use Schematica to make ourselves the next and the last pretty much tier of the altar for Astral Sorcery.
The next thing that I want to automate is liquid starlight because we are going to need this in abundance. And the easiest way to do this is through an automated user from Cyclic because it can input items in a three by three. And these uh, guys can only be input items via right clicking. We cannot pump it in via conduits, but we can pump the liquid out with conduits. So we're going to do just that. And I need to dig a little bit of an area underneath here. So we have a little bit of working room. And this resonant tank is going to be our storage for starlight. So we're just going to run a conduit like this and put conduits all the way over here. And then this ender tank on this side is going to be the way we transfer it around the places for um, astro sorcery because it's going to be just easiest. Uh, so here we are going to say, you're going to make the starlight. So you need to extract it on green. And we're going to insert it on green. And here we're going to extract on red. And here we will insert on red. So we should have that guy always filled up with liquid starlight and that guy filled up with a backlog, right? So we can then just say extract on green and we can disable all of the inserts. And since I don't want to do that nine times, we're going to grab ourselves the conduit probe. We're just going to copy this and then paste, 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 and paste. And that should be the uh, the simple collection complete, right? Let me get a little bit of a breathing room area. Uh, we are going to dig it one block down as well because uh, of uh, the way we do our basements, which are pretty tall normally. So you can walk around and not hit your head and everything. Okay, so we have uh, a tunnel and kind of a basement. So I think I can just go like this. Yeah, I'm just going to remove all of this here. And there it is. Okay. Sweet. All right. So we can remove all of that as well. And that should be pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna we can we can dig a bit more and uh, uncover everything that we have underneath here. So uh, we have a bit more breathing room. Okay, so apply logistics is going to be in here. So let's put the automated user on the side that it's going to be easiest to connect to which is probably going to be this side and I need a brick there, apparently. Um, okay, so the user can go right here. And it has a tick delay, it has the size, it has the change action type, preview, vertical offset, there, what's, that's what we need. Vertical offset minus one or zero. Okay. Ah. So you only have a vertical offset of one or minus one. That's poopy. Because we would need, yeah, okay, fine. We can't hide it. Because the structure builder is not going to do this. Uh, we could have. Oh, that would be complicated. I'm just thinking of what we could be doing. But we'll do a vertical offset of one, change three by three, say use, and that should be. Hello. Lag? Please don't crush my game. Thank you. And if I grab a stack of aquamarines and then we just toss them in here. Oh, that's an input. Uh, right. Um, shouldn't you? Um, we give it power. Let's uh, just do that for the moment. There we go. Uh, and if we give it more inputs, like so. So that should automatically start producing liquid starlight. I hope. So we need channels over there. So we're going to right click this P2P tunnel with the memory card and then we'll head up top if I can get out of here. There we go. We're going to come over here and right click it like so. I'm also going to change this one to be a green smart cable just so we know that it is from the green side. Okay. I will return that memory card in a moment, but we can now add an expert bus here and say aquamarine and we should be seeing aquamarines here fairly quickly. Uh, this guy also needs power and the advanced power cell is uh, way too much for this. So we just need uh, one of these wireless RF transmitters. It should get power. It's getting aquamarines. It's storing them here and we're getting liquid starlight. We already have 25,000 stored plus the 16,000 uh, in here, but that is just going to automatically make liquid starlight for us. One thing that I'm going to do, we're going to say require redstone. I'm going to take this guy off, put it on. And if I give you one of these, why do you do the flickering thing? And these don't. Hold on. 
Uh, let me just break all of these. Right? And we're gonna place them down again. And then we're gonna turn this guy on. Now they all do the flickering thing. Well, rip. <laughs> I mean, they're gonna fill up once this guy fills up, but that might take a while. Um, I might see if I can sort this out, because this is gonna cause frame rate lag, I think. I fixed the flickering issue. I had to replace the conduits and reconfigure them, and also replace the light wells, but you have to place the light wells first, and then place the conduits, and then configure the conduits. So that sorts the issue out, and we don't get any flickering, and we already have 280,000 uh, buckets of, uh, not 280,000, 280 buckets of uh, liquid starlight, which is really great. Uh, so this ender tank we're gonna use to spread it out to the starlight infuser, which is the only thing that is gonna constantly use liquid starlight, and also if we're gonna automate the crystal, uh, the celestial crystal production, uh, we can uh, automate that with, uh, with liquid starlight as well, because we need to drop the stardust and the uh, the crystal into the liquid starlight, and then we have to wait for them to form a, uh, a cluster, and then we wait the cluster to grow to the uh, stage four. We break it, and then we place the liquid starlight again and repeat the same process. So, yeah, that is gonna have to wait though for the next episode, and possibly we'll do some work on live stream on twitch.tv slash breaker. I have to plug this because people don't know apparently. And that is going to have to be it for today. So I want to thank you all so much for watching. I'm hoping you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. You can also subscribe to see new videos. You can support me on Patreon as well if you want. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a great one. Bye-bye.